one of the ways that the Center for Public Dialogue and the Canadian Indigenous Ministry Committee has leaned into the Truth and Reconciliation Calls to Action is through an advocacy campaign called Education Together, um, where a report card is released. Um, but the Center for Public Dialogue won't be releasing a report card this year. Mike, would you like to explain a little bit more of why? The, uh, the ability to produce a report card uh, on, on the fulfillment of uh, calls to action seven through 10, that's equity and justice in indigenous education, depends on the availability of data. Um, uh, and that data right now is hard to come by. Uh, there's some good reasons for that and some not good, not so good reasons for that. Uh, I think the good reason is, is the fact that uh, in 2016, some uh, significant new financial commitments and s significant new uh, uh, consultation commitments were made uh, towards equity and justice in Indigenous education, particularly on reserve. Um, so uh, the, the budget 2016 announced $2.6 billion over five years, uh, which goes a long way to overcoming educational gaps. Um, the other commitment that was made in that, in that uh, that pocket of, of money was to establish um, strong um, uh, consultation frameworks with, with Indigenous communities in, in different ways to create uh, Indigenous-led education systems. And that work has been ongoing since 2016 and is in many cases developing um, some really uh, hopeful and helpful results. Uh, so those are called regional education agreements. We have a 20 year track record of, of a regional education agreement in, uh, in Mi'kmaq country uh, in, in Eastern Canada. Uh, great results uh, so far. Uh, we have similar uh, agreements in BC under the First Nations Education Steering Committee uh, system. Uh, again, a really healthy system with uh, really promising results. And there are, uh, in between those two uh, bookends on the coast, uh, some, some uh, other agreements that are being developed. So all of this is in many ways developmental. Um, so that those developmental processes don't necessarily yield very quickly immediate results uh, that, that can be tracked. So we're, we're concerned about trying to track results of, of a system that, that is well, it's, it's like a bus being built as it's running down the road in many cases. So it's, it's difficult to track meaningful uh, uh, data in that respect. That's the good side. The challenging side is the reality that uh, in many cases, the Department of Indigenous Services is doing administration of, of education systems still. Um, and uh, its uh, ability to, to track data uh, for whatever reason is, is challenged. In 2018, the Auditor General released a, a spring Auditor General's report on Indigenous Services Canada and revealed uh, one of those data challenges. Uh, and it's, an, it's a bit of an egregious one. And that is that the department at that time was tracking grade 12 graduation rates on reserve by counting uh, the percentage of, of students who entered uh, the grade 12 year and then proceeded to graduation. Now, typically in a provincial system, when you're determining graduation rates, you're counting the input in grade nine and the output in grade 12. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the, the grade 12 input and the grade 12 output uh, became the substance of the statistic, uh, which was uh, kind of false. So the, the graduation rate in that, that uh, grade 12 entrance and exit uh, number was around 40%. The aud Auditor General discovered that um, uh, the, the real tracking rate uh, from grade nine to grade 12 uh, was in, uh, in, in the range of about 24%. So that the tracking uh, system uh, was uh, problematic. At the time, the minister who was Jane Philpott uh, promised to address the, the, the challenge. Um, we're, in, we're speaking together in 2020 right now, uh, two years later. 
and the the scope of of that change in in counting graduation rates has yet to be revealed um, so we we have uh, a statistical lag we have a policy lag uh, in the development of of uh, tracking tools that we have to determine how uh, the the really important commitments to indigenous children in calls to action seven through ten of the trc how they're being addressed uh, right now we don't have strong uh, policy and statistical analysis to give us a clear picture of that so uh, we're in communication with the minister's office and the department to try to get some of that data uh, but the lag continues 